My name is Stokes Baker. Today I'd like to talk about how to make a receiver operate occurs using Microsoft Excel's histogram function. In a previous video, I showed you how to make a receiver operator curve using the pivot table function. If the histogram function is not the appropriate strategy for you, you may want to look at this video. The link is shown right down here below. In this video, I will explain what is a receiver operator curve, how to interpret a receiver operator curve, how to perform the calculations with Excel, and how to graph the results with Excel. These are my assumptions that you have a basic understanding of conditional probability. If you need to review this concept, you may want to go to this tutorial at the website shown below right here. I also assume you have a basic understanding how to perform calculations with Excel and you know how to make a line graph with Excel. A conditional probability is the likelihood that an event will occur given that another event has occurred first. Here's a Venn diagram in which you're saying what's the likelihood you're in area B given that you're already in area A. The notation for a conditional probability is the probability of event B occurring given that A has already occurred. We use conditional probabilities to evaluate diagnostic tests. A diagnostic test is some sort of measurement or assay that you use to determine disease state before you have definitive symptoms. The way we evaluate diagnostic tests is to describe their sensitivity and their specificity. What is sensitivity? That's the probability of getting a positive test given that the event has occurred. Specificity is the probability of getting a negative test when the event has not occurred. So test positive when you're disease positive, test negative when you're disease negative. Now the flip side of both of those coins is false positives and false negatives. A false positive is the probability of obtaining a positive test even though your event negative. Positive tests even though you are healthy. And that turns out to be the complement of specificity. One minus specificity. And then of course there's false negatives that you have a negative test even though the event is positive. Now what a receiver operator curve is, it's a graph of sensitivity versus false positives. So how do you determine sensitivity and specificity of a diagnostic test? Well you need to do an experiment. What you do is you measure some quantity of a factor in both affected and non-affected individuals. From that data you determine the proportion of individuals at each level of that factor that are both affected and not affected. From that, you can then calculate sensitivity and false positive probabilities at each level of the measured factor. And finally, using that data, you create the receiver operator curve. I'm now going to show you how to use Excel to create a receiver operator curve using the histogram function built into Excel. Now I have a hypothetical scenario where we're comparing systolic flood pressure between two populations. One that's suffering from a condition known as atherosclerosis, we're responding to this column of data right here, and those who do not have the condition, which I've labeled healthy in this, this column right here. I use the histogram function to create our frequency distribution table, which is shown right here, from the frequency distribution table, one can calculate then your sensitivity and your false positives. And then the receiver operator curve is a line graph of your false positives versus your sensitivity. One can ask the pragmatic question, why would you go about doing that? And the answer is it helps you determine what is the appropriate cutoff value in your diagnostic test. Now in this example we're using systolic blood pressure 
as an indicator of atherosclerosis. Now, what value should we use? What systolic blood pressure? And that's a function of the consequence of a false positive. If the false positive has a high consequence to the patient, then you want to focus on sensitivity at the expense of specificity. In which case, you would probably choose this data point to be your cutoff for your diagnostic test. And that corresponds to 150 millimeters of mercury for your diastolic pressure. On the other hand, if your false positive has a low consequence for your patient, then you would want to do sensitivity at the expense of specificity. In which case, you would probably use this data point shown in red, which would correspond to a cutoff of 120 millimeters of mercury. Now I'd like to show you the steps I used to create the graph from the previous slides. So here is our fictitious data, our hypothetical data. Column A has the systolic blood pressure with people suffering from atherosclerosis. And column B is blood, systolic blood pressure from people who have healthy least arteries and veins. I'm going to use the histogram function to create a frequency distribution table. To do so, I first need to know the minimum and maximum values. So I'm just going to type min and max. And the command for the minimum value it is min. And then I want all the data in column A's to column B. And when I do that, I know the minimum value is 75. For the maximum value, we're going to use the command max. And again, we want all the data in column A and column B. And we know our maximum value is 175 millimeters of mercury. So we now uh, will make our bin table. I don't like the term bin. I prefer groupings, but Excel calls them bins sort of like bins of a basket. And we want to make our bins so it covers all the data. And you need to make those of equal size grouping. So we're going to do 10, 10 millimeter mercury intervals. We'll start with 60, because that's smaller than 75. And then the next grouping would be 70. And then once we have it started, We'll highlight those two cells and then use Excel's autofill function to add the data. So I'm going to grab that box in the lower right hand corner. I'm going to click and hold and drag into 180. And 180 is larger than 175, so we've covered all our data. I'm now going to use the histogram function to do that you have to go to data analysis so from your home button you go to the data tab and over to the right hand corner where it says data analysis click that and then you get the data analysis dialog box and we want to choose histogram and now we have to fill in the values in this dialog box for the input range, we're just going to do column A, so A colon A. For our bins, we'll highlight the, the columns that have our bin data. Make sure you click the labels button since we're first on cell, both the data and the bin is a label. And then you want to put the output in there. And I like to put my output right next to my bin values. And if we were going to make a histogram, we would do this chart output, but we're not going to do that for this particular analysis. And here we have our frequency distribution table. Unfortunately, it's, it repeats these bin values, and it has this column called more, which is undesirable. 
So we're going to delete the unneeded cells and the redundant column. And where it says frequency, we are going to replace that with the term atherosclerosis. Now, to get our count data for the from the healthy population, we, we repeat the process. Data, data analysis, histogram. Instead of doing column A, we're now going to do column B. So B colon B. Our bin data is still in the same location. Um, but we're going to tell the output to go in column F instead of column E. And then we're going to do the same thing. We're going to get rid of the unnecessary cells. And we're going to replace the term frequency with the term healthy. We now have the data we need to do our calculations with. Now to calculate our probabilities to do sensitivity and false positives, we need the totals or the sums from our data. And so for the atherosclerosis, I'm going to click cells E17. And then right here is one of my favorite tools in Excel. This is the AutoSum tool. And you click it, ask you, are, are those the cells you want to add up? We enter because we do. For the healthy population, do the same thing. Click the cell we're interested in. Use the AutoSum wizard, hit enter. We are now going to calculate the sensitivity and the false positive. Now remember, sensitivity is the probability of testing positive when you're disease positive, and false positive is test probability of testing positive when you're disease negative. So if we use the systolic blood pressure of 60 as our cutoff, we are saying all of these people that I've just highlighted are, have atherosclerosis. Since that's the entire population, we would expect the sensitivity to be 1. So to do that command, we're going to go equals. And then you're going to use the sum function, SUM. And then we're going to highlight the entire population. Now, in each time as we go through our calculation, we're going to end at 180. So I'm going to put a dollar sign between the E and the 16. And then I'm going to divide that value, since this is a probability, by the total. And we're going to use the total each time in our calculation. So we're going to put a dollar sign between the E and the 17. Click that. I guess this is our sensitivity 1. And now we're going to use the autofill function to repeat our calculations. So I'm going to click and hold that box in the lower right hand corner. Click and hold. And drag it all the way down to... to 180 millimeters of mercury. And there's our calculations. Now to do our false positives, we would do the same thing. Since the false the healthy population is to the right of the atherosclerosis population, I can just click and drag that all the way across and complete those calculations. Now that we've calculated our sensitivity and the probability of false positive, 
at each systolic blood pressure level, I am now going to make the receiver operator curve. To do that, I'm going to use the scatter plot function. To activate it, you go to the insert tab, highlight our values, click insert, charts, we're going to choose X, Y scatter plot, and we want to choose the option where we connect the dots with a line. Here's our graph. Right now it doesn't look right, but that's because uh, Excel doesn't know what values to use, so it uses 1, 2, 3, 4 as its default for the X axis. So we need to enter our X axis data. To do that, click any one of these data points. Then click the button that says Select Data, showing that the arrow on the top panel. Click it. With the dialog box, we're going to edit Series 1, so click Series 1 and then Edit. We can name the series. I'm going to call it ROC for Receiver Operator Curve. And then I'm going to enter the data for the X axis. Click that box. Highlight the data for the X axis. Click the box again. And go OK. And OK. And we now have the basis of our receiver operator curve. We now need to add the variable and units for the X and Y axis. There's a couple of ways of doing that. The fastest way is to use the quick layout option. Click that. And for our purposes, layout 6 would be ideal. So we click that. And now we fill in the variables. Don't want the numbers there, so we'll delete that. Where it says axis title, highlight it. And I would make the, instead of gray text, I would make it black and a reasonable font size. Like for us, it would be probably 16 point. And then we're going to say false positive. On the y-axis, same thing, and we're going to say sensitivity. Since there's only one line on our graph, we don't need this key, so we'll delete that. We now need to fix the numbering on the x and y-axis. Now remember, the false positive and the sensitivity are both probabilities, so the values go from 0 to 1 and we got from 0 to 1.2, so we need to fix that. Click it, right click, format axis, we get this dialog box, the minimum is 0, which is what we want, the maximum we want 1.0. I also wish Excel would put tick marks as the default on the x-axis. It does not. So we're going to click tick marks and we're going to choose our options. I will probably put tick marks across the major axis and go inside of the minor. The major axis are, axis are being done at 0.2 millimeters so to me 0.05 would be a more appropriate for the minor axis. I like to change the color of the line from gray to a black. Go to this bucket. Go to the line. I'm going to change the color from gray to black. And I like one point. For the font, we go to our text page. Make it something reasonable like 12 point. The font should be black. For the X axis, we're going to do the same thing. And we are now done with our graph. Now to interpret a graph, if you want to f emphasize sensitivity over false pauses, we would probably use that data point. 0.46 corresponds to a blood pressure 
of 150 millimeters of mercury. Now, in the case of blood pressure, you probably would tell your patient to lose some weight, to exercise more. That has so false positives would have a low consequences. Well, death is a major consequence. So in this case, you probably want to focus on sensitivity over false positive. So in which case, we're going to choose that data point. That corresponds to 0 0.52, 0.94. With that, I hope this was helpful. Have a good day. Bye-bye.